sleep here and walk here in the sanctuary. It's always good to feel the move of the Spirit of the Lord and it's always good to see God's people reaching out, touching the Lord and in spite of all their problems, in spite of all their weaknesses, in spite of all their trials and afflictions, uh, we've all come here and we've all, uh, we've all lifted up our hearts with our hands. And we've all given the praise and the glory. And I, I know that God is cognizant of our, of our praise. He, He watches over us. He, He never leaves His own. He never forsakes His own. He never forsakes His children. He never, He never, He never lets a prayer, uh, which comes up from a sincere heart, go unheard. He always hears a prayer uh, that comes out from a sincere heart. Uh, that's how our God is. He's loving. He's gracious. He's kind. Your sins don't keep your prayers away from Him. No sin is greater than His grace. Your sins don't keep your prayers. When I mean that, I'm not saying that you continue in sin and continue to pray. No. But if you have sins of your past life, and if you have really repented, and if you have turned your life from sin towards God, the sins of your past can't stop your prayers from reaching to God. That's what I mean. I don't mean that you continue in sin. Uh, Paul says, shall, shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. No, he's not saying that. And I am too, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying live the way you want to live. Do what you want to do and God will hear your prayers. No. No. Then that's not a just God. Then that's not a loving God. Uh, do you allow your parents, children to do what they want to do and give them what they want? No. Why? Because you love them. Uh, you want them to be disciplined. You want them to value things. You want them to live right. Uh, that's the way our God is. If we, Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Your Father in heaven. See, if we are so careful and concerned about our children, how much more our Heavenly Father is careful and cons considerate upon all, about all of us? We just need to get back to Him. We just need to follow the Lord. We don't need to follow, uh, follow, uh, follow a group of people. No, you, when you go to church, you don't follow a people. When you go to church, you, you follow the Lord. Uh, you go there because God's Word is there. You go there because the Spirit of the Lord dwells there. You go there because you are edified uh, in, uh, there. Just because 1. Uh, 1.2 billion people believe that Mary is the mediator between God and us. That doesn't make them right. Even though there are 1.2 billion people that believe that. So what, you have to follow the crowd? No. See, we have all these things given to us as an example. Just because there's a big crowd doesn't mean they are right. A crowd is not a sign of God's approval. If that was the case, then Jesus would have had the highest crowd. In fact, once upon a time, the highest crowd was following him. And he started to speak things that upset them. And it says from that time, many of his disciples left. John 6 verse 66. And Jesus was upset. Oh, my church is, my church is broken. Oh, many of my disciples have left. Oh no, he was not, he was not shaken at all. He turned to his twelve and he told them, do you also want to go? Go. Because he knew all that the Father has given me will come to me. See, when you speak the truth, when you preach the truth, you don't have to be upset whether people are there or no. God will send his sheep in his fold. See, it's not, it, it's not, it's not what, how many heads but it always has been how many hearts. David counted heads and God was displeased and he judged David because he numbered his well. Because when we count heads, we get pride. I may count 200 heads, but there may not be a single heart that is thirsting after God. What's the use of such a church? But I may have ten heads, out of which five heads are hungry and thirsting after God. That's God's church. 
See, and that's contrary to, to what we see in the church world also. So I don't want to go into that lesson here today. But we were looking at the ways we can get back to God last time, last Sunday. And what can we do to get our lives back in track uh, in serving God. And we looked at, at few points, I believe, we looked at uh, develop an atmosphere of praise. Always let praise come out of your life. Praise come out of your heart. Praise come out of your mouth. Develop an atmosphere of praise around you. Develop an atmosphere of praise in your house. Like we give an example of David, when King Saul was tormented with an evil spirit, and he didn't know what to do. His 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 uh, his, followers, his, uh, his soldiers or his, his men told him there's this boy by the name of David. He plays the harp. Uh, King Saul had tried every other thing. Rock music didn't help him, and jazz didn't help him, and and, 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 and whatever whatever all the tools that he had at his disposal didn't help him. Uh, he said, okay, call that little boy. And that not only Saul was tormented by the evil spirit, but the whole palace was affected by the evil spirit. Not only Saul was depressed, even his soldiers and his captains were depressed. There was a spirit of depression upon the palace. And there was a spirit of fear that was upon that palace. But here comes a little shepherd boy with his heart. Not depressed. Not feared. Not, 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 not tormented by any evil spirit, but he just walked in with his head high up and none of that spirit there would affect him because he came with praise in his mouth. He came with a praise in his heart. He knew before that, he had written a psalm, that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemy, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And he knew two bodyguards behind him. Goodness and mercy were following him. What will man do to you? What will the devil do to you? David knew at any given point of time there were two bodyguards. Not Joab. Not, 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 not his, not, not the sons of Zeruiah. No. Two bodyguards were following him always that were goodness and mercy. Are those two bodyguards following you? <coughs> they only follow you if you praise God. Develop an atmosphere of praise. And when David began to play that harp, the evil spirit left Saul. There was not a band playing. There was not a big a wind instruments playing. Oh no, that was one little shepherd boy with a one little harp. How, 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 how loud does a harp play? It's not the loudness of the music that brings God. Done. Is the right spirit of the one who plays the music that brings God down. If loud music brought God down, then every time the brass band played these songs, God will come down. It's not that. It's not the loudness. It's not the noise. There was noise under the Mount when Moses came with the tablets, there was noise going on, and Joshua said, There's noise. But Moses understood that noise. Moses said, This is not the right noise. It's one thing to make noise, and it's another thing to make a joyful noise under the Lord. So we need to develop an atmosphere of praise. Second was walk in the spirit, be led of the spirit. Don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Don't do what your friends tell you. What your peer, what peer pressure tells you to do. What you think is the right thing. No, what this word says is the right thing, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do the same thing. It's not me. It's not all those who receive the Spirit of the Lord become the sons of God. No, all the walk in the Spirit says all those who are led by the Spirit of God, the same are the sons of God. We have received the Holy Spirit, yes, that's good. Appreciate it. Thank God for it. But am I walking in the spirit? Am I being led of the Holy Spirit? Or am I being led by a spirit of a man? 
or a spirit of a culture or the spirit of the world whose voice falls on my ear is the voice of the spirit is the voice of god falling on my ears through the holy spirit or is the voice of the devil falling on my ears and i think that's the voice of god is my ears in tune with god's voice there are so many voices around us right now in this world there are so many voices everyone has his voice everyone has her voice every culture has its voice every tradition has its voice every sect has its voice every ethnicity has its voice every race has its voice every church has its voice in the midst of all of these voices god is still speaking in the midst of all these voices is my ear in tune with the voice of god i get what i am saying that's me mean, that means walking in the spirit I don't do what I want to do. I don't make my body do what it wants to do, but I make my body do what it should do. The difference between what you want to do and what you should do. I want to do this, but is it right in the eyes of God? If it's wrong, don't do it. Then do what God wants you to do. That's being led by God, being led of the Holy Spirit. And on the, what was the third point we looked at? Get back to God's word. Get back to God's word. That means take the word of God inside. Obey God's word. Don't be just the hearers mm-hmm. of the word of God, but be the doers of the word of God. That's very important to get your life back on track. We start we, we start following God for a certain period of time, but after that we stop, and then we go back to our old ways. God's not upset with us, please. I don't think God like uh, like He's one of us. No, He but He's waiting patiently for you to come back. He's waiting, and He wants us all today to get back to obedience, because it's not just what we hear; it's what we live. That's very important. How do we live our life? Do we obey God's word, or are we just hearers of His word? But we need to be the doers of this. Well, the next point I will tell you is the fourth one is the will of God is more important than your will. We need to realize that always in our in our in our, in our lives. We need to move when God tells us to move. We need to understand the will of God should always be more important than our will, our plans. Many are the devices of a man's heart but the lord directs his steps see we need to we need to we need to ask the lord lord you direct our steps it's not my will that's why jesus said nevertheless father not my will i would like to go a certain way father but let your will be done your will triumphs my will and many times we we move or we take decisions when we feel like or what pleases us that we 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 take decisions we make plans and then we tell god to fit in our plans lord i am doing this you better approve <laughs> lord i have decided to do this give me peace oh no i don't do that i said god show me your plan and allow me to fit in your plan God is big. He can never fit in your plan. We are small and tiny. We can fit in God's plan. Don't make a good big God come into your small plans. You'll get small results. Get your tiny self into a big God's plan. You'll get big results. Don't move when you feel like moving. There will be no blessing in that. But when we move and God tells us to move, God always blesses. They are in the first uh, book of Kings, in First Kings and chapter seventeen. Talking about Elijah. First Kings chapter seventeen, verse two. And the word of the Lord came to uh, came came unto him. This is Elijah, uh, saying, "Get thee hence, and turn eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan." 
And he says, go now, move from here. Don't sit here. Go and hide yourself there. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, verse 4. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Not here. There. You'll get your provision if you move according to my plan. Don't expect God to feed you where you are. If you're not willing to move, don't expect God to move. God moves when we move according to his plan. And God told Elijah, you go there, I, I, I even commanded the ravens. You don't know how God can feed you. You have your set ideas, oh, he'll come for my help and she'll be there for me and they'll be there for me uh, and these people will be there for me. You have your plans, but God can send a crow to help you. God can make a donkey speak to you. God can, God can make a uh, 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 what, who was the, what was the cock? The cock to crow and speak to you. Just like he spoke to Peter. God can do anything. Anything. And then he says, So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Sherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. It was not just a, not just a vegetarian meal. He was a non-vegetarian meal. Hmm? And so he drank of the brook and he came to a came to part of Rawai and the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. And God dries up the brook now because he wants Elijah to move. Move again from that place. And we get used to a method sometimes. So God used the raven, so even this time God will use the raven. God used a man, this time he'll use a man. God used my boss, maybe he'll use my boss again. God used my a neighbor may be used. Don't get used to a method. God is not relegated or God is not uh, limited by methods. And Elijah thought, oh, now he's set for life. The brook will always be there. The ravens will always feed him. God said, no. No, he said, move. Move, not just geographically, but spiritually. And then he moves. You go home and read the story. He moves and as he moves, when God tells him to move, he's provided. When his will, he fits his will in the wills of, will of God, God provides. God protects. God blesses. God will always bless his will, not your and my will. And don't care what people think. What did people say? People didn't die for you. God sent his son to die for you. And if he loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you, he meant to say he won't provide for you. He won't protect you. He won't bless you. The problem is that we have limited faith. And limited faith brings limited results. We don't trust God enough. Oh, ye of little faith. Jesus didn't want their faith to be little. He wanted their faith to come up to a level of great faith. He said, I have never seen great faith like this in Israel. She began to grow in faith. Then in 1 Kings, let's turn to chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. And this is again, again now Elijah meets Elisha, his disciple. And he says in verse 19, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shepher, who was plowing with twelve ox of oxen before him and he was with the twelve. He had one ox, up, uh, one yoke of oxen with him, that means he had two, uh, two oxen and a yoke. And Elijah passed by him and, his, and cast his mantle upon him. And what did Eli Elisha, do? Uh, Elisha do? And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, then will I follow you. And he said unto him, Go back, for what I have to do with you. And he came back. And what did he do? He burned that yoke of oxen. He, he, he took the yoke of oxen, slew them, boiled their flesh. And even not just the oxen, oxen, but he also destroyed the instruments. He also destroyed the yoke. And gave to the people. Why, the reason why he did that, because he didn't want to go back to his past. Don't, he didn't want to go back from where he came. He wanted to go where God wanted him to go. And sometimes you have to burn some bridges. 
that bridges may be the bridges of your sin, yes. that bridges may be the bridges of your rebellion, of your relationships, of your friendships. You have to burn some bridges of your addictions. You have to burn some bridges of your love for money. You have to burn some bridges of your dependency on things and people so that you don't go back from where you came from. But you go to where God wants you to go. Yeah. And that's what Elisha did. He moved on with Elijah. And God was telling Elisha to move further, further, further. And you see this disciple of Elijah was different than all the other sons of the prophets. Elijah was running a school of prophets. Elijah was running the school that I believe Samuel started. He started a school to develop prophets. And Elijah was running a school for the, of the, of the, known as the, sons, the school of the sons of prophets. But he got a, a student by the name of Elisha who was different than all other students. And he says here in 2 Kings chapter 2, let's come now, when Elijah is about to be taken up and now he, his successor is to be chosen. And he says in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 1 onwards, and it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, the Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now see how they move from one city to the other. And Elijah said unto Elisha, wait, I pray you. And Elisha said unto him, I am not waiting. As the Lord lives, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they didn't stay in Gilgal, they moved to Bethel now. And the sons of the prophets came, now these are Elisha's friends who studied with him in the school. These are Elisha's friends. These are another students in the same church. And this they come in verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said, Do you know the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yes, I know. Hold your peace. Don't talk too much. I'm not going where you are. I'm going where God wants me to go. And again, Elijah said unto Elisha, Stay here, carry here. And because the Lord is not sending me to Jericho. Elisha said, I'm not staying here. As long as I live, as long as you live, I shall be with you and I will never leave you. So they moved from Bethel to Jericho. And the sons of prophets from Jericho now, these are Elisha's friends in Jericho. Now they come to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? He answered, Yes, I know. Please shut up. Don't try to influence me. And, and then verse 6, Elijah again says to him, Tell I pray you, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. I am not staying here, I am going to Jordan. Elijah said, I am not leaving you. And 50 men, of the, 50 men of the sons of prophets again, again, they came to stood the view afar off. Now these 50 men, these 50 students were standing afar. They didn't want to move from their comfort zone. They didn't want to burn their bridges. They didn't want to give up their security of the world. They didn't want to give up their so-called relationships and friendships. They didn't, want to, they didn't want to give up. They didn't want to give the world. They didn't want to give their position up. They didn't want to give their rebellious spirit. They didn't want to give their addictions. They didn't want to give their, 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 their spirit of, of, of lordship. And they stood afar off. To view, to only view the things that's going to happen now. But Eli and Elijah, verse 8, took his mantle, wrapped it together, and smote the waters. This, this is not nothing great less than the division of the Red Sea that is the Israelites saw under the leadership of Moses. This was as great as that. And it says, as he hit the waters, the waters of Jordan were divided. And they both, only they both, these 50 also could have joined. But these 50 didn't want to move. And those two went over on dry ground and came to pass when they went beyond Jordan. It takes a sacrifice to cross the Jordan, says. The crowd will stay before Jordan. Only a few will cross Jordan. And only the ones that cross Jordan 
will be blessed doubly. Yes, double anointing. Hallelujah. You need double blessings. Move when God tells you to move. Amen. Fit in God's will and God's plan. Don't make God to fit in yours. And it says, and Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what you want. Ask. And Elijah said, a double portion of my spirit be on me. And Elijah said, I don't know, I don't know how, whether you'll get it. But if you've asked for it, nevertheless, when you see me taken up from thee, it shall be done. And he saw a whirlwind, a chariot of fire, and horses of chariot. What a sight! What a sight! Those fifty missed. And all those other sons of the prophets in Bethel and, 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 and in other Jericho missed. And Elisha was standing right there. And he said, My father, my father was to have the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. At that very moment, Elijah takes the mantle and strikes the water again. Where is the God of Elijah? And the water sparkled. Says, move when God wants you to move. Elisha moved when God told him to move and he was blessed. He was anointed. Some people just keep harping on yesterday's achievements. So oh, I did so much for God. I did so much for God. I did, I did, I did. What are you doing today, my friend? What are you doing today? How's your spirit today? What about your sacrifices today? What about your giving today? God is not the God of yesterday only. He is the God of yesterday, today and tomorrow. I need to do for God what I did yesterday, I need to do it today, I need to do it tomorrow. Only death will stop me from being a worshiper. Amen. There is something we all can do for God. And some people, just because they have stopped moving with God, have been stopped blessed, being blessed by God. That's the answer. Move when God tells you to move. The second thing is, get among the right people. The fifth point. Get among the right people. Get in the church and stay there. Stay there. It just it doesn't say get amongst people, no. Get among the right people. Get among the right people. People who don't tell you what you want to hear, but people who tell you what you're supposed to hear. Don't get around a man of God who tells you what you like to hear. Get around a man of God who tells you the way it is Amen. and what you are supposed to hear. Yes. Don't get around a man of God who's after your money and wants to tell you good, good things because he needs your offering. No. Get around a man of God who's not interested in your money but is interested in your soul. Amen. Get around the church that's getting ready for the bride of Jesus Christ. And stay there. Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Get, get close to a faithful friend. Make friends in the house of God. Make godly friends. Don't make friends who just tell you, Oh yeah, I know you're hurt. I know, I know, I know. But let them tell you, You're hurt because of your faults. You're very rebellious. Get back to God. Humble yourself. And it may hurt you, but it's as faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Just because, oh, you're okay, don't, it's okay, I sympathize with you. I know if I would have been in your place, I would have done the same thing. That's your enemy. They are the wrong set of people you're around. Stop getting around such people. They just comfort you to destroy you and deceive you. Because we need to understand that everyone that comes in our life brings in our life a spirit with them. If you stay too much with people who are money-minded, 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 you'll see that you get that spirit. Only think about money, 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 money. 
If you see only around people who want to grow in life, ambitious, ambitious, no sooner you get an amb ambitious spirit. You get around people who are only likes movies and sports, movies and sports, talk only about movies and sports and, and games like our young, young, young children here. Go to school, they only hear about games, games and movie stars and, and sports stars. They keep thinking about Ronaldo and Messi and oh, I don't know who the new sports stars are. I'm not saying sports is bad, sports is good. But don't worship sports and don't worship sports stars. I only worship God. Every person that comes in your life brings a spirit in your life. Everything that you hear on the internet is pouring something inside of you. Every article you read is pouring something inside of you. If you read the word of God, it is pouring something divine inside of you. Be careful what we take in. Don't surround yourself with people who are struggling with the same sins that you are struggling with. You'll get nowhere. Surround yourself with people who have overcome the sin that you are struggling with and tell them to help you and pray for you. That's why we need the church. That's why we need to be in the presence of overcomers. Not that we all are perfect, no. But what I am weak in, you are strong in. What you are weak in, I am strong in. Let's come together and help one another. Amen. What Peter was weak in, John was strong in. What Thomas was weak in, Matthew was strong in. And when those 120 came with their weaknesses and strengths, and they made their weakness one, and their strengths one, and they were in one accord, Amen. and one spirit, and Amen. together the power of God came down from heaven. You can't expect the power of God to hit you when you're sitting in the wrong crowd. Are in the wrong set of people. Are sitting in your home alone. And sulking and pouting. The reason why some of you are not growing in Christ. Because you stop coming to church. And then you tell. Oh I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know what's happening to me. I'm getting all these thoughts. And I don't know what's happening. Start coming to church. Amen. You know what's happening to you. But you don't want to accept it. If you get around the right people, God's presence will be drawn into your life. Hebrews 10, forsake not the assembling of, of yourselves together as some have forsaken, as a manner of some is. But as you see the day approaching, can we see the day of Christ approaching? Uh, do you believe we're in the last days? Yes or no? Yes. So what does the scripture tell in verse 26? Or 25, I don't know. Let's turn to Hebrews 10. And so much the more, it says. So much the more. Don't stay. Don't stay out of church for long. It says, it says in verse 23, uh, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love. See, what, when, when will that happen when you come in church? There will be some people that will provoke you to love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting. And I want to exhort you all saints. I'm not going to condemn you. I want to exhort you all. Please come to church. Amen. Please walk in the house of God. Please Amen. don't forsake the assembling. I know there are weaknesses with everyone. Somebody will hurt you. Somebody will say a wrong thing. Somebody will show a wrong spirit. When somebody shows a wrong spirit in your house, do you leave your house? When somebody in your office shows you a wrong attitude, do you leave your job? Then why do you leave the church? He says, and, and exhorting, I'm not, I'm not taking the side of, if there are some people that are hurting you, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. And they need to be dealt with. And if you bring it to our notice, we leave it. We're not condoning that kind of an attitude. No, that's not supposed to be there. And it says, and, and exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Now, now Paul says, now you know this is right. 
Now you know this is what you have to do. The next verse, verse 26, he says, Now if you sin willfully, after knowing this, if you still don't come to church, after knowing this, if you still forsake the assembling of the saints, you are doing it willingly. I'm not saying if you have work, if you have to work that day and you don't come to church, it's okay. The God is not a tyrant. But if you're sitting willfully means you're sitting on the sofa in your pajamas, sipping a sip of tea and eating bhajiyas in the rain when it's 10 o'clock and you need to be here, you're sinning willfully. And he says if you sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. I'm giving the knowledge of the truth today. Amen. No worries, no and you don't do it, I wash my hands of your blood. Your blood will no longer be on my hands. And he says, the knowledge of the truth there remaineth to no more sacrifice of sins. Even though, even, even, even Jesus would help you if you don't change. If you don't turn to him. So let's get among the right people. The sixth thing is live a life of holiness with humility. I am not just saying live a life of holiness. Because we in Gospel Assembly Church, I am talking about us, we think we are so holy that our holiness makes us proud. <laughs> And we are far away from God. And the people that we keep names, they are closer to God. That's why I said live a life of holiness with humility. I can preach an entire sermon on every one of these points. It's a very important combination required in a Christian. Some of us sitting here are proud that we live a holy life. I am not, I'm not saying you should not live a holy life in word and outward. I am not saying that you shouldn't dress right, you speak right, live right, think right. I am not saying that. We need to do that and we are not stopping it. But I am saying that after doing it, are we becoming proud in our spirit? Then all your holiness goes in the gutter. The most perfect example of holiness with humility is Jesus Christ. He was holy, perfectly holy, inside out. And yet, he was the example of humility. He was a perfect example of a humble human being. And there was no airs or grace or there was no, no, no iota, not even a single cell of pride in that man's life. Let's, let's, let's not become, see, let's, let's turn to Isaiah 57. See, let, let me show you that holiness always resides in a humble heart. Holiness is always looking to reside in a humble heart. I'm talking about the holiness that comes from God. Here in Isaiah 57 and verse 15. This is God speaking. For thus saith the high and lofty one, that is God, that inhabited eternity, whose name is what? What's his name? Holy. Holy. Now let me tell, show you where he dwells. He says, the heaven is my throne. And the heaven of heavens can't contain me. But he says, I dwell in the higher and the lofty place. And with him also. With him also. There is of a contrite and a humble. Can you see holiness and humility in this scripture? Oh, I don't feel God because you are too proud. Become humble, you start feeling God. And also being filled with God. A proud person will never feel God. A proud person will give names when the Holy Spirit is moving. Only a humble person will open his heart and say, God, come in. Come in. Come in. He says, I, 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 I dwell in the high and the lofty place and also with him there is a contrite and a humble spirit. Why? To revive their spirit. I know life knocks us down. Problems knock us down. Sicknesses sometimes take a toll over us. Mental issues are so so great sometimes that you don't know what to pray. 
and how to pray. Sometimes you have a doubt. Is God really there? Should I go to church? What am I getting? Those thoughts are wrong. No, thoughts are never sin. Unless we commit to those thoughts and do those thoughts, then it becomes sin. So just because you're getting thoughts, don't condemn yourself. Being tempted is not sin. When you fall to the temptation, that becomes sin. So these thoughts will come up in your mind. But God says, when I am there, I will revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. No one can help you, saints. You need God's help. Yes. And if you need God's yes. help, humble yourself. Amen. Humble yourself. Come down on the high horse that you are riding. It may be a horse of money. It may be a horse of fame. It may be a horse of position. It may be a horse of too many things in your life. It may be a horse of something that you have achieved all your life. Get off that horse Amen. of pride. And God will revive your spirit. The chief mark of counterfeit or fake you, holiness is the lack of humility. And we can see that in, throughout the New Testament in the, in the life of the Pharisees. It was counterfeit holiness. It was fake holiness. It was holiness without humility. Like the Pharisee and the publican praying in the temple. And the Pharisee says, thank you God, I'm not like him. Thank you God, I'm not like them. Thank you God, thank you God for placing me in the body of Christ. Thank you God for placing me in the true church. Thank you God, I'm not like them. Proud. But the other person standing next to him couldn't even lift his head. He says, God, have mercy on me. A sinner. Amen. And God said, Jesus said, that's a humble man. Be humble enough to accept that you are proud. Holiness can 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 Holiness can be made a reality only and only by the grace of God. We are called to be holy. You can't earn your holiness. You need the grace of God to be holy. Amen. And James 4, I believe, and verse 6 says, God resists the proud, but He gives His grace to the So if, if you need grace to be holy, so what do you need to be to receive grace? Humble. So you see how holiness and humility are related? You need grace to be holy, but in order to receive grace, you need to be humble. And when you humble yourself, you receive grace. And when you receive grace, the grace enables you to be holy. Hallelujah. Holiness can be made a reality only and only by the true grace of God. Only the humble receive grace. And when the seed of humility is placed, is planted in our hearts, listen to me, I've written this down. When the seed of humility is planted in our hearts, it has to be watered by the grace of God. And when the grace of God waters humility, that humility comes into a full maturity and blossoms into a beautiful bouquet of holiness. Hallelujah. Do you get that statement? Yes, sir. It's a book written by Andrew Murray, Holiness with Humility. Wonderful book, you can get your hands on it. He talks about this, Andrew Murray. And I wrote this down from his book. He says, the Holy Spirit, the, the, when the seed of humility is planted in our hearts, it will be watered by the grace of God. And the Holy Spirit will make sure that it grows. And when humility comes to its full maturity, it blossoms into a beautiful bouquet of holiness. Holy Hebrews 12 says, follow peace and holiness, and holiness with all men, without which you will never be able to see God. So live a life of holiness with humility. The last point is endure in all of the above things that I have said. All of the above things. 
Light from creating an atmosphere of praise, walking in the spirit, living the word of God, and then we looked at uh, uh, moving when God tells you to move, get among the right people, and live a life of holiness with humility, endure in these things. Don't just live these things for a day or two, a month or two, a year or two, and then give up. You know, some people get up, run, fall. Get up, it's okay to fall, but get up and start running again. Don't lie down. That's the problem with the Christian race. If we don't get up, we won't grow. But let's continue to run this race. I'm telling you, saints, Christianity is a race that God doesn't give the prize to the one who comes first. He gives a prize to everyone who completes the race. It's not a race like the Olympics or a 100 meter sprint or, or the marathon. The one who comes, the first three get gold, silver, and bronze. No, everyone who completes the race gets a golden crown. Isn't that good to hear? Yes, sir. Isn't it comforting to hear? I am not in a race, that's why I am not, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to take this brother's calling or that brother's calling or that sister. I am not interested in getting anyone's calling, I am interested in my calling and walking worthy of the calling wherein I am called. Amen. And there is a crown given to you if only you complete the race according to the calling in which you are called. Don't try to complete a race with someone else's calling, you will be disqualified. Complete the race with the calling that God has placed on your life. Walk worthy of the vocation wherein you have been called. See? It's very important. That takes, that takes out the envy and the jealousy out. Because I don't want to come first. I'm not in a rat race here to come first. No, God help me to complete my race. Paul said, I've come first in my race. No, he said, I've fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have run my race. He didn't say I have come first in my race. I have come second. No, he said I have completed my race. And now there is laid for me a crown of righteousness. And he says not just for me. Not just for me. And this part of the scripture gives me more encouragement. Because it was not just for Paul. But he says for everyone that loves his Appear. Doesn't it say that way? The Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them that also complete the race. Love is appeared. We'll be there when Jesus comes. We'll complete the race. So saints let's endure until the end. Jesus said in Matthew 24, He that shall endure till the end. And before that, in verse 12, he says, For iniquity shall abound. As we get into the last day, saints, you'll see sin growing and iniquity abounding. And people becoming more worldly. People becoming more ambitious to do something in the world, achieve some position in the world, make a business grow, and, and get to a position in the world. Lawlessness or iniquity will abound. It will abound, it will grow. And you think, oh, what am I getting going to church? What am I getting? Uh, what, what, what has God blessed me? I want more. I want more. I want more. And you, your love will wax cold. You're not committing adultery. You're not killing someone. You're not, you're not stealing somebody else's wealth. No, no, you're not doing all those things. But you're, you have the wrong ambition. You have the wrong focus. And you're focusing on the world and acquiring the things of the world when you are not called to acquire the things, you are called to acquaint yourself with God. And because this iniquity, iniquity is very, very deeper than sin. Iniquity is a deep-seated root of sin. And iniquity will abound. And because of that, the love of many not in the world, in the church. Not in the world. Jesus is talking to the disciples. He says in the church, the love of many shall wax cold. But, but he that shall endure till the end, the same shall be saved from the great tribulation. Those who leave and go, 
those who those who love wax is cold will go through the great tribulation and then they will think oh why why did i leave the church why did i leave god endure till the end not just for a time not just for a season not just for a few moments the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4, not the Matthew one, the Mark one, it says. Um, one of the ground, I said, I think it's, it's a rocky ground, it says. And because there was no depth in that ground, because there was no depth in that soil, he says, they, the word of God is preached. And you know some people, when they hear the word of God, they are so excited for one day. Some of them are only excited till they leave church. Some of them are excited till the, till the week and next Sunday they again think, oh, should I go to church or no? Some people are excited for a month. It depends on how much soil they have on the rock, on a stony heart. Can you find the scripture? Mark chapter 4, yes. And some fell on a stony ground where it had not much earth. There is earth. But not much. Now, this much differs in everyone. Some, some much may be this, some much may be this, some much may be this much, some much may be this much. But underneath will be stone. But a good ground is only mud, only soil. Now, this, they, they received the word and it immediately sprang up. They changed their life. They think, oh, I have got it and from today, God is first. And immediately it sprang up because it has no depth of earth. Next verse. But when the sun of sun was up, it was scorched. This is when, when you go out to your office again tomorrow morning, you hear the same words, the same talks, the same ambitions, the same same thing, the same same meetings, and the same uh, same talks come up, and the stock market, and and, and, and what 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 is talk, what what talks goes on in the office? I've left the office for a long time, so I don't know much. A lot of talk goes on near the uh, chai tapri and, and uh, in the canteen. And the same old talks. And so, because there's a sun that scorches it, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some, oh, while well, giving the whole parable, what, where about where it didn't endure much? Is it the thorns? I don't know. Their, their, their mind is not when I'm speaking on, 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 a, on, a, on a topic. I'm looking for endurance. The word endure, I know it's in Mark 4. Let's turn to verse 17. I, I, I had to open it. And it says, verse 16. And, and these are likewise they which are stone, sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. They receive it with gladness. Stony ground because there's a little mud there on the ground still, and they receive it. And it says, it says in verse 17, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, they endure, but for a time. This is the scripture I want. They endure, but for a time. Afterward, when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately. Just the way immediately they receive it with gladness, immediately they throw it out. They are immediate. They, 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 they are led by not the Spirit of God, they are led by their intuitions. They are not led by the Spirit, they are led by the world. And they, they are not the ones who have patience in their life, they work on intuitions. They don't think. That's why Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who meditates on the meditation requires effort, time and patience. You meditate on the word of God. You think, you evaluate both the sides. You take counsel from a man of God. You don't do what your flesh tells you to do. You don't do what you think is right. But in the multitude of counsel there is safety. And you weigh both the options. And you get on your knees and you pray and ask God to lead you in that situation. That's not a stony heart. That's a humble heart. That's a good ground. 
And that is the one that will endure till the end. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, what did he do? Endured the cross. He endured the cross. He didn't give up on the cross. He, he wasn't carrying the cross for the last day of his life. He was carrying the cross for 33 and a half years. He was carrying the cross in his teenage years. When he was a teenager, when a teenager, when people were doing wrong things, and when people were mocking him because of his, because, because he was in, the, in his mother's womb before even she got married, and people called him an illegitimate child right from his young age. He was hearing all those things. He was hearing those things. He didn't say, what am I getting? What, what did he put me in, Father? What, where am I? I thought I will be accepted by Israel. I thought I will be accepted by these people. Where have you put me? No, he endured his cross. He bore his cross. Even in the midst of accusations and afflictions. His father died when he was young. He was a teenager. Got into his father's workshop. And took care of his family. And people used to come at, at his, in his shop. And sometimes falsely accuse him. He gave us a false peace. You didn't give us a good, you didn't do a good job. See this wood chipped off? And he didn't fight with them. He said, okay, I'll do it. I'll give you a new one. What do you know about Jesus' 30 years of life? What do you know? It's not written in the Bible. But Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes in you, he will reveal my life. He will show you the things that I have went, I went through. He will make you live the way I lived. And he went through all those trials. And he bore the cross. He endured the cross. He kept the faith. He fought his fight. He finished the race. He endured <coughs> till the end. And what does it mean to endure the cross? Just write these few scriptures. What all do we need to endure? What all do we need to endure? When it, the, scripture, the, the scripture is very easy, endure the cross. But what does it mean to endure the cross? The first thing is you endure hardships. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Write it down. Go home and read. You endure hardships. Second is you endure sound doctrine. It's not easy to sit un, under a ministry that speaks the truth and not be heard. Every message hurts us. And I'm not here preaching just to hurt you. This message first hurts me. And you have to endure that message. You have to endure sound doctrine because, because the, the Paul said in the last days, people will rise and will not endure sound doctrine. And he said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, endure the truth, endure sound doctrine. Third thing you have to endure is endure afflictions. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. When you endure afflictions, that means you are bearing the cross. The fourth thing is endure chastening. When the Lord chastens you, not punishes you, when the Lord chastises you. When you have done something wrong, or you have done something sinful, yes, and you have repented, yes, but chastening of the Lord. Blessed are the ones that whom the Lord chastens. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 7. You endure that chastening. You don't, you don't murmur. You don't grumble. You don't give up on God. You don't give up on the church. You don't talk against the ministry. You don't talk against the children of God. You don't talk against, but you endure it. You endure your chastening. Because scripture again says in Hebrews that no, uh, uh, no chastening at the present seemeth joyous. When you go through a chastening, it's not joyful. You don't, you, you, do you feel good when somebody chases, when God chases you? Do you feel good? No, we don't feel good. That's why it says, no chastening at the present seemeth joyous, but it seemeth grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards, nevertheless, afterwards, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness in whom it is exercised thereby. Did I quote the scripture right? Yes, sir. But if you wait, if you endure chastening, you see afterwards, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness. In whom? Not in all. In whom the chastening has been exercised. Only in the ones those who have endured chastening. 
So one of the things you endure on the cross, you endure chase, and the last thing is you endure grief. Sometimes life is going to knock you down. Sometimes you're going to lose your loved ones, and there will be grief. There will be sorrow. You lose a job, there will be grief. You lose, you lose someone, someone in your family, there will be grief. The sickness comes in the family, there will be grief. Sometimes there is relationship issues, there will be grief. First Peter chapter two verse nineteen. If you endure grief, this is to endure grief. Let's endure grief. Let's endure all these things, things. And we can't do it on our own. We need God's help. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to live in the Word of God. We need to walk in the Spirit. We need to praise God. Develop an atmosphere of praise. That's why saints live. If you want to live in the way, walk in the way that is pleasing to the Lord, this, this is what you, we all need to do. We all. I'm saying it may be hard, but it's not impossible. I can do all things through Christ. Thank God for a church. Thank God for a Sunday morning service. Thank the Lord for bringing us all here together. Really appreciate the Lord for His goodness, His grace, His kindness, His mercy. Let us continue to pray and remember all the prayer requests uh, in the house of God. Let us pray for all the needs of the church. Let us pray for Brother and Sister Sinti. They have, they have sent their love and their greetings to you all. So let us continue to remember them in our prayers and let us remember all the saints in the church and the request of the prayer request for sickness and healing and, and deliverances let's pray for all the needs of the church amen ji de liter apne pushkar goshti ya vachna cha dwaye samasthe karna apnar maite e bible me apnar ek ek sundar asa margadarshak e ani apnar maite jar apan jar parmeshwara cha adhin asla parmeshwara cha vachni vachli tar aplyala kharokaraj khup aplya ayushyat khup tikani ani anek goshti aplyala दाखून देण्यात येणार आणि फक्त माझी एकच इच्छा आहे माझी एकच प्रार्थना आहे की प्रत्येकाने ज्या वेळेस आपण इथं येत असतो लक्षपूर्वक ऐकत असतो तर आपण हे जे ऐकलेले आहे ते आपल्या दैनंदिन जीवनात आचरण करूया आचरणात आणूया कारण कारण इथं फक्त जे बोलतात त्यांचा तो फायदा नाही ते बोलत असतील कारण परमेश्वराच्या अभिषेकाखाली परमेश्वर बोलून देतो बोलतो आपल्याशी परंतु आपलं अंतकरण आपलं मन जर आपण तयार ठेवलं आणि जे बोललं जातं परमेश्वर जे आपल्याशी बोलतो ते ऐकून आपल्या जीवनात आपण त्याचा वापर करून घ्या फक्त ऐकून इथून जाऊन परत त्याच गोष्टी आपण केल्या तर काय उपयोग नाही हे वर्षन वर्ष वर्षन वर्ष जातं आणि शेवटी आपण कुठं जातो आपल्याला माहिती तर तिथं काही आपल्याला ज्ञान मिळत नाही आपल्याला माहितीये एकदा आपण मेलो त्या खाडग्यात गेलो तर तिथं कसलंही ज्ञान नाही काही नाही परंतु इथं जोपर्यंत आहे जोपर्यंत आपल्याला ज्ञान मिळतं आपण घेऊया आपली तयारी करूया कारण आपल्याला माहितीये देवाच्या राज्यामध्ये आपल्याला जायचं आहे आणि त्या देवाच्या राज्यामध्ये आज माझी तयारी आहे का कारण प्रत्येकाला देव त्या राज्यात नेणार नाही प्रत्येक स्वभाव वेगवेगळा स्वभाव जो असतो त्या स्वभावाने परमेश्वर तिथं नेणार नाही आपल्याला माहितीये सर्व स्वभावावर आपल्या सर्व आत्म्यावर स्वतःचा आत्मा या सर्व आत्म्यावर आपल्याला कार्य करायलाच पाहिजे आणि हे कार्य करण्यासाठी इकडनं वचन आपल्याला मिळतात तर हे वचन आपण लक्षपूर्वक ऐकून ते जर आपल्या जीवनात आचरण केलं तर खरोखरच खूप गोष्टी काही घडत असतात आणि त्याचा अनुभव पुष्कळ लोकांनी घेतलेला आहे तुम्ही पण घ्या आपण सर्वजण घेऊन घ्या कारण आपल्याला तयारी करायची आहे आणि हे आजचं जे वचन होतं ते मागच्या मागचा जो संदेश होता त्यालाच ब्रदर जॉईनी कंटिन्यू करून आपल्याला ते सांगितलेले आणि ह्या ह्याच्यात अजून दोन तीन मुद्दे ब्रदर जॉईनी सांगितलेले आणि ते खरोखरच आपल्याला फार महत्वाचे आहेत आणि सर्वात पहिला मुद्दा म्हणजे देवाची इच्छा आपल्यासाठी काय आहे हे जाणून घेणं फार महत्वाचं आहे आपण आपल्या इच्छेनेच वागत असतो आपल्या इच्छेनेच राहत असतो आणि आपल्याला माहित आहे की देवाची इच्छा फार वेगळी आहे आपल्यासाठी आणि ती इच्छा काय आहे हे जाणून घेणे फार महत्वाचे आणि या वचनाद्वारे या बायबलच्या द्वारे किंवा संदेशाच्या द्वारे देव दाखवून देतो की त्याच्या इच्छेत आपल्यासाठी काय आहे सर्व सगळं पूर्व नियोजित आहे आणि त्या पूर्व नियोजनाप्रमाणे आपण जाणून घ्यायला पाहिजे की परमेश्वरची इच्छा काय आहे साधं उदाहरण दिलं तर आदाबानी हवा 
परमेश्वर ने इच्छित नौते कि सैतानी कार्याला भुराव पड़ावाजे तिथ जे फसवणुकी है तो फसवणुकी अपन नहीं पाजे थे फल खाला पाजे देवा ने आज्ञा दी होती इंस्ट्रक्शन दल हो परंतु ते गेले तिथ काम गेले ऐकल खाली पड़े तो अपन ये बढ़ाए का कारण हवे मन सैताने ने इच्छा निर्माण के लिए इच्छे ली भुर पड़ी इच्छा अपने मना मधे कभी कभी सैतान खूब वेगड़ा वेगड़ा इच्छा आतो ती इच्छा अपन का मन बातो बात इच्छा पूर्ण कर प्रयत्न करते पर तो अपने साधे एक उदाहरण तुम्हारा संगत की येशु क्रिस्ता ने शेवटी का प्रार्थना मध्य शेवटी ही माजी इच्छा नहीं तुझी इच्छा पूर्ण होती अपन कभी ही प्रार्थना करते मैं महत्व नहीं मैं प्रत्येक प्रार्थना मध्य शेवटी मैं मन तो इट्स नॉट मै विल इट्स नॉट मै प्लेजर इट्स नॉट मै विश बट आई वॉन्ट टू डू युअर विल लेट डाय विल बी डन अपन संपूर्ण प्रार्थना करो शेवटी हे वाक्य संगा कारण अपने इच्छे प्रमाण देव कर इच्छे प्रमाण शेवटी करते अपन चांगले चांगली गोष्ट मगतो पर ही प्रार्थना करता ना देवाला सांगूया की परमेश्वरा तुझी इच्छा काय आहे ते तू संपूर्ण होऊ दे ते घडू दे आणि दुसरा मुद्दा नंतर सांगितलं की आपलं राहणं आपण कोणाबरोबर असतो हे फार महत्वाचे कोणाबरोबर आपलं जीवन असतं कोणाबरोबर आपला दिवस घालवतो कुठेही ऑफिस म्हणा कुठेही आपल्या ह्याच्यात म्हणा शाळेत म्हणा कुठे किंवा आपल्या शेजारी हे कसले लोक आहेत काय लोक आहेत वचन संगत जग बरबर एक रूप हो पर एकूप हो आणि हे फार महत्वाचे कारण काय आपण आपलं जे मन आहे आपलं जे विचार आहे ते चांगल्या व्यक्ती बरोबर राहिलं नाही तर आपलं मन पण त्यांच्याच प्रमाणे होऊ शकतो आता साधं उदाहरण मी तुम्हाला आता देऊ शकतो एखादी व्यक्ती तुमच्या बरोबर आहे जी तुम्हाला चांगली तुमची मैत्री आहे तुमच्या बरोबर राहतात ते म्हटले नाही मी हे बिझनेस करतो मी हे कार्य करतो मी ह्याच्यात व्यापार करतो मला ह्याच्यात खूप काय पैसा मिळतो काय होत तुम्ही कोणाच्या इन्फ्लुएन्स मध्ये आला त्या व्यक्ती बरोबर मग काय होत तुमचं संपूर्ण ज्ञान तुमचं संपूर्ण लक्ष त्या व्यक्तीने ज्या गोष्टी सांगितलेल्या आहेत त्याच्यावर सगळं केंद्रित होत तो म्हटला नाही हे काम केलं तर फार चांगलं मिळेल इथं गेलं तर फार पैसा मिळतो तिथं केलं तर फार पैसा मिळतो परंतु देवाच्या इच्छेत काय म्हणून पहिला मुद्दा काय सांगितलं आपण देवाची इच्छा बघायला पाहिजे लोकांची इच्छा बघायला नाही पाहिजे माझ्या शेजाऱ्याची इच्छा बघायला नाही पाहिजे म्हणून तो त्याच्यासाठी देवाची इच्छा बघण्यासाठी देव काय म्हणतो हे बघण्यासाठी आपण चांगल्या लोकांबरोबर राहायला पाहिजे जे लोक देवाची आनंद करतात जे देवाच्या जवळ आहेत जे न्यायी लोक आहेत त्या न्यायी लोकांबरोबर राहणं फार महत्वाचं आहे म्हणून आपण म्हणतो की तुम्ही या मंदिर या चर्च मध्ये या या मंदिरात या कारण जेणेकरून ही जी सहभागिता आहे हे सगळे देवाची लोक आहेत आणि त्यांच्यात राहिलेलं आणि असलेलं आणि त्यांचं या पवित्र शास्त्रामधनं ऐकलेलं हे फार काही आपल्याला महत्व मिळतं त्याचे आपलं आयुष्य फार बदलून जातो म्हणून सगळ्यात पहिली गोष्ट आजची जी सांगितली की देवाची इच्छा काय ते जाणून घेणे महत्वाचे आणि इच्छा जाणल्यानंतर ती इच्छा जाणण्यासाठी आपण कोणाबरोबर राहतो कसं आपलं जीवन आहे दैनंदिन जीवन आपलं कसं आहे आणि आपल्याला माहितीये जर आपल्या आजूबाजू आपले सर्व बहीण बहीण इथं काय असतात ते दिवस रात्र बायबल वाचतात प्रेर करतात आणि किंवा या संदेशामध्ये असतात म्हणून ते दुसरं काही बोलणार नाही परंतु आपल्या बायबल मध्ये आपल्या आजचं जे शिकवण मिळालेलं आहे त्याच्या बाबतीतच आपण बोलू शकतो म्हणून त्यांच्याबरोबर राहणं हे फार महत्वाचं आहे तिसरा मुद्दा ब्रदरने सांगितलं की आपलं जीवन कसं असायला पाहिजे आपलं लाईफ कसायला पाहिजे म्हणजे आपलं जीवन म्हणजे एक पवित्र जीवन होलीनेस फार जरुरी आहे आणि हे 
परफेक्शन साठी तर आपण ते घेऊया मग नंतर जे त्रास असतो त्या त्रासातून आपण आपण जातो ते त्रास आपण परमेश्वरासाठी सहन करू आपल्या कारण आपल्याला माहिती आहे हे त्रास हे ग्रीप म्हणतो आपण जे त्रास आता आहे हे जे संकट आता आहे ते फक्त थोड्या दिवसापुरते नावापुरते परंतु जे येणार राज्य आहे ते अगदी सर्व व्यवस्थित असेल आणि देवावर आपण राज्य करा जिथं सुख आणि समृद्धी आणि कसलाही त्रास नसणार आहे तर हे वचन आजच्यावर आपण मनन करूया फक्त आज ऐकून त्याच्यावर ते सोडून घेऊन त्याच्या कामाने परंतु गेल्यानंतर याच्यावर अभ्यास करूया वचन करूया आणि विशेष महत्वाचं म्हणजे ते आपल्या जीवनात आचरणात आणूया तर मी परमेश्वराची उपकार स्तुती करतो माहिती की परमेश्वराने आपल्याला खूप आशीर्वादित केलेले आहे परत मला या गुरुवारच्या मीटिंगमध्ये जे गुरुवारच आपलं फॅमिली लाईफ क्लास झालं त्याच्या बाबतीत पण आभार मानायचे की परमेश्वरांनी खरोखर तो दिवस आपल्यासाठी फार चांगला दिला आणि आपल्याला माहितीये खूप काही आपल्याला त्याच्यातन अनुभव आणि खूप काही शिकायला मिळालं आहे आणि मला माहितीये पुष्कळ लोकांना कामामुळं येता आलं नाही परंतु जे कपल्स आहेत म्हणजे जे आता आता नुकतेच लग्न झालेले आहेत किंवा लग्न होणार आहेत किंवा लहान मुलं आहेत काय आई वडील आहेत त्या सगळ्यांसाठी तो धडा होता तर आपण आपल्या आपण टाकलेला आहे तो आपल्या ह्याच्यात टाकलेला आहे तर तो निश्चित अगदी म्हणजे खात्री करून ते ऐका वेळ द्या त्याच्यासाठी आपण हे जे धडे जातात ना ते सगळ्या गोष्टी आपण ट्यूब ह्याच्या ह्याच्यात टाकतो ग्रुपमध्ये टाकतो युट्यूबमध्ये पण टाकतो ग्रुपमध्ये पण आपल्या गॉस्पल असेंब्ली चर्च ह्या ग्रुपमध्ये आहेत जर तुमच्याकडे ते नसेल तर प्लीज प्लीज ते घ्या आणि ऐका हे संदेश सोडू नका कारण तुम्ही जितक्यांदा ते ऐकणार तेवढंच तुमचं आयुष्य चांगलं होईल तुम्ही जास्त देवाकडे येणार तर ते त्याला नाकारू नका तर मी परमेश्वर उपकार सुट्टी करतो ब्रदर जॉय यांचा पण उपकार सुट्टी कारण फार सुंदर असा तो धडा होता तो दिवस चांगला गेला आणि असेच आपण पुढं पण करणार आहोत काही धडे घेऊन आणणार काही अभ्यास करणार आहोत आणि परमेश्वराची त्याच्यावर आपण आशीर्वाद घेणार आहोत तर परमेश्वरची परत उपकार स्तुती करू असू द्या करूया आणि हे जे काही आपल्या विनंती आहे